It was the best of times. I mean, Rafael Nadal is just, and he's really practically is a leader. Rafael Nadal has looked unstoppable. He's lost in one match here for his entire career. Yes, have the trophy with me today. Yeah, that's the most important thing in Roland Garros, in my opinion. The important thing is how we finish the season. Just five weeks later, the worst of times. In the last hour and a half, CNN's confirmed the London Olympics will be without one of its biggest star names after Rafael Nadal withdrew from the game. I was preparing for my first trip to Manacor to interview Rafael Nadal in his hometown when the announcement hit the airwaves. Not only had the defending gold medalist withdrawn from the London Olympics, he would miss out on the singular honor of carrying the flag for Spain during the opening ceremony. He was still dealing with the disappointment when I met up with him a couple of days later inside his gym in Manacor. When did you realize you just weren't going to be able to compete at the Olympics? It's one of the toughest decisions, decisions that I take in, in my career because always play Olympics uh, was uh, a big goal for me. It was a big uh, emotions always because it's only one time every four years because it's the, the, the most important event in the, in the world of a sport. And I, I was very excited to, rep to represent my country. This is a low point, no doubt, but you've had, you've had many high points this season. Uh, the, the, the clay court season was, was fantastic. The victory over your rival, Novak Djokovic, at the French Open was, was historic, a record seven title. Last month was a hard month for me because my knee uh, didn't respond well after all, and I was... Uh, I had a lot of problems, but since the beginning of the season in Australia uh, until Roland Garros, I think I had a, a great season, uh, one of my best seasons. The level of tennis was very high. This is Manacor, a small industrial town on the island of Mallorca. Rafa grew up here and returns every chance he gets. I have everything here. I have all my friends since school. I have uh, all the family, and my relationship with my friends, with my family, we was great and very close, so that's very important for me, you know, and I, I, just, uh, I just enjoy when I come back here and see all the people that, that I love and I, I feel comfortable with them. The road to Rafa's success begins here at the Manacor Tennis Club. This is where his uncle, Tony Dadal, has taught him the game. He's been his coach ever since. Porque desde que empezaba el entrenamiento hasta que acababa, cada minuto tenía su importancia, cada punto tenía su valor. Y él se acostumbró a ir al 100% en cada entrenamiento, entonces todo esto le ha sido más fácil. Yo de, cuando él era pequeño yo era un entrenador muy exigente y le acostumbré a, a ir al 100%. Pues mira, Esta condición creo que le ha servido para mantener esta línea de, de, de esfuerzo. I accompanied Rafa to a photo shoot where I caught up with Carlos Moya. He was the first Spanish player ever to become world number one. Both of them grew up on the island and have been friends for 15 years. I met him when he was 11 and I hit like 20 minutes for him. I was 21 and you see that he's good, but uh, I didn't know how the 11 years old kids are hitting those days, you know, and, and I, I saw that I realized that he was very good, but I could never say that he was going to win 11 slams and be number one in the world for so long. And as many slams as he wins, you can always say, you know what, Rafa, I was the first number one. I was the <laughs> first Spanish number one. So you will always be able to put him down to his level, I guess, if yeah, he gets a little too important. That's probably the only thing that he cannot take away from me. Just give us those. 
I know on the courts you're a gladiator. Uh, off the courts, I've known you for a while and you're, you're quite shy. Are you used to having the attention around you now? Is it, is it something that you that you feel comfortable? I, you know, I am shy. I am a little bit shy. You know, now less than a few years ago, for sure. But uh, that's something that is difficult to lose. But um, it's something that is, is very, happens very often for me. And I, I think I've learned a lot the last couple of years. And I, I'm able to relax a little bit more when I'm with people, to enjoy a little bit more the moments than a few years ago. How do you like to disconnect? I know you like your golf. We shared that experience in, in Toronto a couple of years ago. You shared the golf. I didn't. How, how do you disconnect when you're here? I am with family. I am with the family, with the friends. Seriously, when I'm here at home in Manacor, I, I really don't have attention on me. I am a one more really normal guy, and that's very important to me. Where do you get that extra strength to fight more and to do it on clay where the points are longer and the sets are longer? Where do you get it from? Well, that brings a little bit from the education when I was a kid. And uh, probably my uncle take a lot of part on that. No? Pushing you harder and harder? Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I really love the sport. I love the competition. Uh, I really enjoy when, when you are there, when you are fighting, when you are in dramatic situations. I really learn to, to enjoy these moments and that's why sometimes I'm able to, to fight uh, until the last ball because I, I really enjoy when, when the situation becomes dramatic. Rafa, I know it's been a couple of tough days for you. Thanks so much for taking the time. Seriously, Thank you very much. So